the first of two very exciting blue ribbon events here to round off the PlayStation 4 GT3 League here for Excite Racing League. I am Peter Markroft bringing you live and uninterrupted coverage from the Green Hell, the home of German motorsport, one of the longest circuits in the world at 13.1 miles an hour. It's the Nordschleife in the Nürburgring. Right in the centre of this, you have the modern circuit as we know it that features the likes of the Dunlop Hairpin and the likes of the Coca Cola Hairpin or down to the RTL Strike and so forth. But here, this is the old school circuit. The site where James Hunt and Nicky Lauda went wheel to wheel many years ago. We had saw Lauda have that horrendous incident which scarred him for life but also brought him back to his fire for winning championships. With the likes of the carousel, little carousel and more, this is one of the true challenges for drivers all around the world. It's narrow, it's bumpy and it's absolutely lethal. So good evening to all you people out there. Well, we've got a little bit of a moment. Going to quickly go through the championship standings as we've got them. So leading the way at the moment is Bagabo, having got that excellent win at Watkins Glen. And the third place is Suzuka last week. He's on 58 points. But right behind him on a mere eight is Skonky Puppy who won in Monza and also won in Suzuka but those two critical zeros in the middle might change things going forward. Killer Ramsey like meanwhile 49 just one point behind his teammates and only nine points between the top three. In fourth place got unique talent unfortunately he's not here tonight despite having got two excellent second places at Watkins Glen and Suzuka he's going to be stranded on 36 points and we got in fifth place Ace Killer on 32 in the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C had a disappointing race as Suzuka getting only one solitary point and eight points at Watkins Glen has put him on the back burner. However, he has plays occasionally, so never ever say never. Nick Maywell, sixth place is 94001 on 27 points. One podium position at Watkins Glen being his greatest triumph. Nick Nick Olick disappointed to be down in 7th place or just or, or the total there of 27. He's not really had the chance to bring himself into the game. He's led the races many times and shown amazing pace but he just hasn't been able to get out there and really demonstrate to the world just how good he is. Then of course we've got football 676 double one. He's down in 8th place on 24. The system flint in the genetic G55. He's in ninth place on the 18 and last week Paulie Dog rounding off the top 10 on the BMW Z4. So for all you people out there that are watching this live on the screen and exclusively on Twitch.tv, I'm Pete Marcroft and again you can always get all your questions into us here on the chat box and we'll do what we can to go through them. So let's get out onto the circuit. We've got a 19 minute qualifying session this week because the North Schleife will be a massive 13.1 miles long and outlap is about 8 minutes. These guys are going to get one shot. That's all they're going to get. After that it's going to be into the race and unusually for XI Racing League we are starting in twilight we're starting late in the evening and we're going into the dark and of course next week we will be bringing you our double length two hour stream double points over that small gap at the top of the audience anything is absolutely possible it's going to be a top of 50 points for the lead there at the Saki de la Sar. it's our tribute to the Le Mans 24 hour which happens a week later but for now up one ace killer is in the McLaren MP4 Dust 12C just trying to see who's out to the closest to the front of the stakes there's a few more cars ahead of him so let's go try and find out who they are at this moment in time Girl 4 Demon currently going through in the BMW Z4 in the middle of sector 2 look at how much length is on that circuit map there it just shows you the challenge that these drivers are going to face when they're out on the circuit here in the Nordschleifer so make sure out there watching this got system flint the Genetta G55 I get the feeling he's not actually leading the order here, so I'm trying to find who is out the front with such a long track, it's going to be almost impossible. But I get the feeling it might well be Pauly Dog, I think it is, in the Audi R8 LMS. So we'll grab a board here for now. And you can see just how narrow the circuit is, how close to the barriers. It's almost in many ways like a street circuit. You think to yourself, you've got so much acres of runoff at most of the other circuits where you can spin the car around, really get yourself a chance to turn your pace back on. Not here in the North Schleifer. You make a mistake and you are going into the wall. And if you do it in sector one, you've got to take a hurt car around the circuit for a good eight to nine minutes before you can make it to the pits. So it's going to be a real challenge for the drivers there. So I imagine the drivers are going to be a lot more conservative, thinking more about the long game rather than going all out to attack like we saw at Sakitao last week in Suzuka, Japan.
Okay, our system flooding the Jetta G55. He's got my sympathy vote for this week because this is one circuit where, with the bumps and the narrow strip of the tarmac, that car is really going to struggle to get the power down. So, Polly Dog in the Audi R8 LMS on his way towards the carousel, going through this unusual part of the circuit, which is very, very flat out. Very straight as well, though. It's one of the tracks where you can really get the tap on. But you've got to watch out for that kink in the middle. The poly dog has just gone through there. You might think you can take that full pelt, but in a GT car, you're not going to have much hope at all. And this is a circuit which is really iconic with motorsport. It's brought so many champions of one here. Jackie Stewart, Nicky Lauda, James Hunt, so many others have been out there on the circuit and really given their all. And it's also been a staple for endurance racing. It still has to this day a 24 our race here. That must be a real challenge to the driver. So here we go. One of the most unusual and dangerous corners in the world. It is the infamous carousel. Just look at how deeply cambered that is. It's almost like you're riding on an oval there with how the car sits at about a 45 degree angle. In many ways reminiscent of the old banking that you find at Monza. Except it's nowhere near as fast. You've really got to be patient with that corner. Still got a long way to go here before these drivers make it round for their laps. It's an unusual qualifying this. It's a one shot and that means they're going to have to keep going back between the drivers. It's going to be very tricky to see who's really got the pace. So let's move away from Parley Dog to see where he is on circuit at the moment. He's showing his ninth place now. Then you've got Bergamo, winner at the Watkins Glen and podium finisher at Suzuka just going in to the carousel. Again, very deep there. Headlights are blaze as the sunlight starts to go. I'm in the pit lane because I'm a boss, I do that. Then you've got Baker Bell 72 in the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C. Being chased quickly by one of the RUS there. I'm not sure who that is. That might well be Killer Ramsey. So let's try and find him. See if we can see what's going on there. Yeah, indeed, Pauly Dog still doing his rounds as in Bobby Swag. And they're no longer teammates, teams of drivers. You've got Killer Ramsey in the RUF on his own. You've got Night 4001, the Skarky Puppy, who's catching up to one of the other cars at the moment. So... I still got a feeling that Polly Dodge is going to be the first one over the line, so we'll keep on board with him for now. Oh, he's got very, very wide there, almost into the wall. In fact, yeah, a bit of a collision there. You can hear the car really smashing the wall there, really clattered, clattered into that. Now, it's not affecting his steering. Is he going to have problems getting the car around the Nordschleifer as he heads towards this final sector where he's very fast at first? Then you've got the little carousel which can catch him for a loop. And look at that gravel. Look how close to the runoff that is into the mini carousel. He's actually missed that completely. He's gone so wide and almost got into the wall. Really difficult conditions here. And the rumour is that we are expecting some rain. So you're in the Nordschleifer. It's dark. And then it rains. There's not much more of a challenge in motorsport than that. Pauline Dog now says pretty much mile long straight. It's a case of sit back and have a drink. No, I'm moving further back. You've got Bagabo in the BMW Z4, currently going through the third, second sector, attacking as much as he dares. Again, you've got me in the pits like a boss. Ace Kill 15, he's just coming up to one of the faster straights towards the end of the lap. You've got Maldovic ahead of him, Gurfall Demon, and then System Flint. So, let's move back to Pauly Dog. I'm sure he's about to come onto the starting lap. Here we go. So, Round the final corner, it does the pit lane entry, so this is it. It's the Gran Turismo 4 layout where the pit lane is the start finish line. Polly Dog is getting ready to have a go here. Getting onto the circuit, just got into his lap now. So into the first corner, goes a little wide there, runs onto the outside, which he dares. Tries to avoid going over the curb too much. Goes a little wide on the outside, getting some a bit of leaves onto the line there as he pushes right to the outside. Really attacking in this Audi R8 LMS for his first act. A bit wobbly on the braking there, that's forced him off line. And that's caused him to go to a deeper part of the corner at the first part of the happy. Really finding this difficult into the sweeping chicane bends. And you can see he's just been very cautious, tentative at the moment. Maybe he'll look like a daisy call, trying to make sure he gets the grip out of the car. And an unusual sack qualifier. I'm going to have to move back, Sean, to another driver. Oh, but very, very wide there, Paul. No, almost went off the circuit. That's going to cost him quite badly on his lap. Bobby Swire, meanwhile, not yet on a lap, I do not think. 
No, he's just yet to start his lap, so he's currently going through. Now, we're currently looking at Paul, you know, we've only got three sectors to this lap, I've no idea how far apart they are. So we've got no idea how long it's going to be in terms of actual pace with these guys. Paul, you know, is our current bleeder on the track, so we're right on board with him going down through the kick towards this really difficult downhill bend into the sandbags. You can see how wide he's gone there. That's going to compromise his entry with all the invites and gravel on the outside. You don't know where they're there. And you can see a poly dog pushing a little bit in the middle part of the corner, applying the revs gently, trying to do all he can to avoid spinning the car out. And again, for you guys out there on the stream, live and exclusive on Twitch.tv, Excite Racing League brought to you courtesy of myself, Peter Marker, for uninterrupted coverage. The chat box is open, so please get your comments on there, and we'll do our best to get through them. So Pauly Dog, yeah, you see actually Bobbly Smarda is ahead of him on the track, surprisingly. His first sector was two minutes long, but 94001, a full second quicker in the RUF. So 94001, riding on board with him in the ball. Let's see how well he's going in the RUF. Definitely one of the faster cars in the grid so far this season. You can see a skulky puppy and Killer Ramsey have yielded. That's a great result. So it's going to be a question of when one of these drivers, you're probably going to bet on them to get a home victory for their manufacturer. But never say never. It's such a long circuit, it's so easy to go off. Going through the wild and kick into the tight half bit there. Moving through the forward, 94001. Still got the fastest pace so far by a second. Quite surprised by that. You got football 67601 on the 51.2. Ace Corps 51.4. Assist of level at 52.1, but we still not see the eight the guys right in the front of the order. And again, we've not got Nick Nicolique, we've not got unique talent, so the faster drivers are sitting this one out. Night 4 on the RUF, getting very close to the outside wall there, really pushed out as much as he dares. Getting on the outside banking, trying to attack this fast forward sector down towards the carousel. Meanwhile, Bobby Swagger is literally just behind him. So Bobby Swagger might be looking at a potential opportunity here to get himself a bit of a toe down to the carousel. And again, the drivers who have yet to cross the beams to start the laps, okay, they don't start them soon. They are going to miss out here we are into the final nine and a half minutes. It's been an unusual qualifying this due to the length of the circuit. It's a kind of track where you've really got to be watchful. Heading through the fast kick, you can see Nightfall 001 using the outside run up as much as he dared there. Really aggressive driving from the RUF pilot heading down towards the carousel, really attacking. Bobby Swagger and the RDR8 LMS just comes into frame. But what were we on the braking there? Night 4001 that pushed him wide on the outside as we head up to the most majestic corner on the circuit, the carousel. 9400 on an all out attack where he's drifted wide, he's understeered. That's going to cost him critical time. Moving back from the field, Bobbly Swagger took that much, much cleaner. And that might give him some critical time that brings him back into play. Still not at the second sector, so we still don't know what kind of time these drivers are given. And there's quite a few drivers in the middle, like Gerford D with Ace Killer, Bacon Buzz, and, 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 and the Skarky Puppy Kelly Ramsey, who've yet to break the beams for sector one. Whether that means that they've made the time cut, I do not know, but we've got eight and a half minutes left. These guys are going to get the skate on. They want to make sure they're going to get around and get on the grid here. Night for zero zero one, getting a bit wide on the outside. They're running towards the outside runoff. Behind him, meanwhile, do you going to see a Skarky Puppy Killer Ramsey in the pit still? Bobbly Swagger really on the attack here. In fact, Killer Ramsey's not left the pits. Killer Ramsey is not going to qualify. That's a bit of a drama so far. Unbelievable. He's actually missing this on the stream. Meanwhile, Flipper Racing says, Have a great race. You too. You're going to be recording this to try and get some footage of the Division 2 race, which is happening simultaneously. So hopefully, we'll get some nice footage of that on the YouTube channel in a couple of days. 94001, meanwhile, looking to try and attack here in the RUF. Oh, he's gone wide. He's clipped the barrier there. And he's gone into the gravel. That's going to ruin his lap. Bobbly Swarter is not far behind him and potentially an outside shot for pole. But however, a Skarky Puppy has broken the beams on a 48.1 for sector one. So Skarky Puppy is out there and on the track. He has made it. So question is, Bobbly Swarter, let's see how well he does go through the second sector here. He's got a 332. He's actually slower than 94001. Despite 
fight the accident. Interesting. And then Expecta, I thought 9400, as he goes through the mini carousel down towards the end of the circuit here. Really attacking as much as he dares in the RUF, moving further forward. You can see we've got a few more drivers out on laps at this time. Good for D with assistant Flint in the Ginetta G55. That's got a 152 for the first sector, so he's kind of off the pace at the moment. But going back through the field towards Paulie Dog, he's just coming up towards the end of the lap now. He's just coming around the final sector. He's actually going a little bit slower. He's just gone through the mini carousel. So he's actually lost a little bit of time here. Behind him, meanwhile, Bobbley Swagger is really on the attack and is already on that long straight. Has Bobbley Swagger gone past the RUF driver of Paulie Dog? Indeed, he has his lot. He's gained six seconds on him. So Pauly Dog is now well behind here. He's easily going to finish behind Bobbley Swan. Let's see what kind of time he does towards the end of the lap. Just going up to the final kick. He's got a car ahead of him. But I don't think it's going to affect him with turbulent air thus far in this part of the race. Six and a half minutes to go here in qualifying for these drivers. Get out to the green hell for real. There's no rolling start here at the North Schleifer. So it's less of an advantage for the guys who are on pole position. But Bobbley Swan breaks the beams on a six. 51, 94001 on a 648 though. So 94001 has been absolutely brilliantly thus far. Moving it back through the field, we've currently got Polly Dog trying to go for all the lap time. Maldivic as well in the McLaren on a 335 and a 336 for System Flint. So let's ride on board here as we go to Maldivic. He's out ahead, I believe, going down this long straight of McLaren MP4 12C. Really attacking as much as he can, trying to get some time out of this. So we've already got three drowns on the line. Paulie Dog at a 7 0 2. It's unlikely to be a time that gets him anywhere but the foot of the field. That was we've already got a 651 over in Bobby Swan. A football's done a 657 and a 7 0 1 for System Flint. So let's run a ball with Maldovic as he heads towards the final corners in the McLaren MP4 Das C. Just about to come round the pit lane entry now. As another the sun has started to set here at the Nürburgring in Germany. Really high attack here from Maldovic 1 heading towards the final. Final part of the lap. How's he going to set a time? A 6.59. Not guessing good enough for P4 at the moment. So on the lap, we've got Bacon Bumps, Bagamo, and Skanky Puppy. So let's get him in front of that. Good for Demon Spun. He's lost a lot of time there, so he's really going to struggle. Bagamo, meanwhile, in the BMW Z4, really on the attack. And behind him somewhere is Skanky Puppy in the RUF. I want to ride on board with him because he looks like he's at the pace thus far. As he heads up these tight uphill corners, down towards the jump. It is a lot of group for the gravel trap. This little bit here, deceitful. It doesn't look as bad as it is, but you get a nice little bounce, and it will throw you so easily offline there and towards the wall. Scoggy will be really on the attack here as much as he dares in the R. You have this special opportunity to get another critical victory and get himself some key points before that double points finisher at the Le Mans Key Day of Sar next week here at the same time, same place on Twitch.tv. Scargy will just want to go up to the little carousel now. We'll see how well he takes this. Right on the sensory, really nailed that right on the middle. Absolutely superb for Scargy Puppy as he goes all out to tack down towards the final side. So you can see how dark it's getting already. The sun has almost completely gone. These drivers might well be starting pretty much in the dark or halfway through their first lap, it will go dark. So it's going to be a real change for the drivers. They're going to really struggle with this as the conditions change overnight. And who knows, we might get some rain. Anything is possible. Scargy will be in the RUF, one of the challenges, the challenges so far, really on the offensive. And he heads further towards the end of the lap through this mile-long straight and into this hair-raising, fast-speed, high-speed, high-change-of-direction sweeper section. You've really got to get your lives absolutely nailed here in this car. Scarky Puppy has been an absolute master of that when it comes to getting on the attack here in the RUF. Slow down for the last real time before the pit lane. And then we've got the final corner for Skoggy Puppy. A 6.51 and a 6.48 are the fastest lap times at the moment. Is he going to break this in the RUF? It looks pretty good to me. A 6.43. A full five seconds clear. Wow, that's amazing. So for Paulie Dog has fallen right down the order down to six points. Football 6.76 to 1. Never got a lap time in. Gerfall Demon hasn't started a lap either. So he's not going to qualify. Ace Killer has retired to the pit. So... 
Bacon Boss, the McLaren MP4 Class 12C, has a chance to get into the top five here. Quite a few drivers have made the mistake with such a long circuit, you have to make your lap time count and you have to make it clean. These drivers have all struggled here at the North Life. Really found it difficult to get qualified down. Coming towards the end of the sleeper section, Bacon Bond 72 in the McLaren MP4, that's 12 say. Rides that bend beautifully, rides the outside bend, outside curb. Towards past the pit lane, aims to clip the inside wall there like he's driving at Monte Carlo. Before heading over the brake beam line, can he get a faster time of 7 -11. He'll be disappointed with that, that's really put him off the pace. But Bagavo in the BMW Z4. He's probably the last of the real runners at the moment because Ace Color 15, he's going through Sector 1 but I don't think he's going to make it round because there's only two minutes to go and he's not yet gone into Sector 2. So Pagamo has got to get the power down here in the BMW Z4. Winner at Watkins Glen, podium finisher at Suzuka. He knows he has a chance to take a great championship victory. He's in the lead but he's only eight points clear and nine points clear of third. Both the RUF title challengers are very much a podium finish away from him and with that double points race coming up at Le Mans he's got to maximise his opportunity at such a difficult track and as I said before look how dark it's got already the drivers will be in a night race it's going to be a night to sunrise and a question of how well they take it here heading towards the final turns the ground opportunity for Bagarbo to get a scalp here and get himself up the field what's the time going to be? A 6.51, good enough for third place at the moment, so a great shot from him. Meanwhile, going up further at the moment, we did say that Ace Color 15 is on that, but yeah, he's now in the pits, he's retired, so that is pretty much it. So I'll give you a rundown of the pole position, it's going to Skunky Puppy on a 6.43. 9.4.0.0.1 compacts as his rear gunner in second place on a 6.48. Bagarbo keeps his championship bumps alive on 6.51.1. A bubbly swagger, a further half a second back only on such a long circuit, a 6.51.6 .6 from him. Fifth place, Maldivik in the McLaren MV4 Dash 12C. He's very much out of place, but he's going to maximise his chance. Him with a sister flip in the Jetta G55, who did brilliantly well. Polly Doug disappointed with that error that he made, cost him dearly in the Audi R8 LMA. Mess. and then that is the last of the drivers who actually qualified all the other drivers failed to set a time and perplexingly that means that I actually have out qualified Killer Ramsey what's up with that Now let's not forget, there's no rolling start, there's no formation lap here. So we've got a five minute warm up, and then after that the race will be very much on. So we'll round up board to see who's leaving the pits at the moment. We've got football 676 double one, and ahead of him... Trying to find who's at the front of the field, Skanky Puppy. Well, he is a pole man at the moment, and despite the fact that the qualifying has happened, well, we're into the second day and the sun is out, but it's very much in the rise. So the drivers are going to be starting at sunset, racing through the night. These guys have really got to get the power down and really do an excellent job in order to survive this here. It's an opportunity, but it's a difficult one. So we'll round up both for the next five minutes in this final warm-up test before the race itself. It's only seven laps of the Norwich Life. It's not the longest of tracks in terms of time. I'll say that again because I'm going to completely hash it out. It's not the longest of races in terms of laps, but the track itself is one of the longest in time. So Skarky Bobby going on with this fast sweeper section down towards his kink. Very easy to get that wrong. And look at the drift that he got halfway through that. Heading into this downhill hairpin goes a little bit wide, forcing towards the grass. Brave driving from Skarky Bobby. I think he's trying to find that knife edge to get it in the extra time he needs when he's out in the field. You can see how wide he took the curb there because it's such a raised bollard. It's so easy to get that wrong. So easy to go. You find yourself going off into the barrier. You've really got to get that right. 
Skonky Puppy, meanwhile, doing all he can in the R. You have to get that final bit of recon. Understand the circuit with a track like the Norschleifer. It almost seems to change track to track. It's a circuit unlike any other. Quite where you get away with saying we're going to make a circuit which is 13 miles long that has over 100 corners, one of which is so deeply cambered it's like a banking a NASCAR circuit. Everyone would think you're crazy, but those Germans did it back in the 1970s. Well, it looks like Skarky Bubby's backs off there because he knows he's not going to make it round for a lap, so there's not really much that he's going to learn apart from what he's got. Polly Dog, meanwhile, in the Audi R8 LMS, really wants to try and make a recovery, but again, he's made a complete hash of that. Got that completely wrong at the louder kink, and that threw him off on the hairpin. Made it very difficult, but it's better to make that mistake now in the final warm up rather than getting it wrong in the race. Now this is interesting, you've got both the RUF drivers really close together on circuit um, and then you've got Pauly Dog ahead of them, so that's quite interesting. But Pauly Dog, disappointed with that position that starts him all the way down in 7th, he made a complete hash of that qualifying lap and it showed right at the end just how far off he was. So Pauly Dog, in the race in the Audi, he might well be a potential threat because he's starting in the middle of the pack, so if one of the drivers makes an error ahead, he can scythe right through. And of course, the Nürburgring Nordschleife is weird, because the run down to the first corner is barely anything. There's almost no difference, so the drivers have really got to be on it. Polly Dog pushing a bit wide there. Let's move further forward and get another driver who we can follow at the moment. Bacon Bonson and McLaren has gone off the circuit and pulled off, so he's out of the way, out of it completely. Maldovic, he's the driver who's done really well. He starts fifth place in the McLaren MP4 Dash 12 C, his best qualifying of the season so far. You can argue about whether it's up for attrition only or not until the heart until your cows come home. He's done a brilliant job. Really made this work. And we're just coming up to the end of the warm up now. No one's going to assess a lap time, but looking guy, you can see a system flint in the two minutes for his first sector. Bagavo 54, Polly Dog 57, Killer Ramsey 55, but Skanky Puppy a 50. Full four seconds faster through the first sector alone. However, he starts at the foot of the field. Actually, yesterday. Oh! Football 676 number one is disconnected! He's retired at the start of the race! Unbelievable! He's missed out now. I'm going to have to very quickly retire here and then get this out to the actual circuit and spectate. So here we go. Now, moving further forward as best we can, you can see a bit of carnage already. A system flint has hit the inside of Maldivik and Maldivik has pushed him into the wall. Both drivers have gone straight off the circuit there. Disaster as Ace Kill 15 tries to go around the outside of Gerfall Demon in the BMW Z4 tries to want to go in the second corner. Meanwhile, it's eighth place riding side by side down towards the first second of Dakar. Unbelievable turn. There's another is McLaren spun around. Ace Kill 15 goes through. Pauly Doug is now to sixth place. Got football 676 number one. It's disconnected, but he hasn't. He's running in P5. It doesn't quite what happened there, but Gerfall Demon. And look at this already in 10th place. Bound of it. Killer Ramsey is now to ninth place. Gerfall Demon is eighth place. Then you've got Ace Kill 15 with McLaren every four. That's what I'll say. Pauly Doug is sixth place in the, in the Audi R8 LMS. Football 696 number one. In fifth place in the BMW Z4. Then Bobby Swagger threatening the podium already. Already the RDA already LMS goes very, very wide and drifts as we head into Garbo in third, third place in the BMW Z4 doing a great job, but then the wide stir in the front. He got 94001 out of the head of the state, Skarky Puppy, who's already started to open a gap. Skarky Puppy's doing all he can to get into a distance here. Sebastian Vitalask and get away, but Bubbly Swagger is looking on as Bagavo has got right under the wing at 94001 at the end of sector one, heading down towards sector two. Really great opportunity here for the BMW driver. Oh! 
battling on the edge here on the podium as you can see that Pagano is moving a bit tight to line there at night for 001. Knight seems to have less confidence as the sun has started to set. The lights are on full beam from the BMW driver. Move back from the field. Football 676 has escaped from Polly Dog as you got Ace Killer 15 on the fret from Killer Ramsey, who started at the foot of the points and is already in eighth. As Ace Killer 15 makes a mistake and goes wide, that allows Killer Ramsey to sweep up through. And Ace Killer 15 filters back into eighth place with Maldemick and the McLaren. Everybody that's passing behind him is not far off. And Kevin Ramsey in the RUF is on at the charge. Meanwhile, we already got a message up the metal from Sister Flint about being points to the wall. We did cast on the stream. Oh, but it's side by side with Pauly Dog. As Killer Ramsey tries to dive underneath, but Gullah completely wrong. And Ace Killer's ended up rear ending him as a part of that. Both drivers now off the pace side by side. And Baldovic is looking to try and capitalize a disaster for Killer Ramsey. Move the forward. Oh, big mistake! 94001 is off! He's gone off and allowed the kick into the hairpin! That's going down to fifth place for Pauly Dog and the Aldi R8 LMS chasing after him! And then you've got Killer Ramsey in the RUF in seventh under and pressure here! Meanwhile, 94001 trying to get back past the BMW Z4 of Football 676 Normal 1! Meanwhile, Bobby Swaller in third place in the Aldi R8 LMS chasing after Magamo! And there's Scarky Puppy, so the battle at the moment is all in the midfield here! And side by side, Pauly Dog and Killer Ramsey once again! Killer Ramsey in the RU are trying to sweep around the outside with Michael Bray. Can he make this sting? This will be a brilliant move. And indeed, he completes that. What an overtake. Unbelievable from Killer Ramsey. Now that's the sixth place already. He's on an absolute charge at the moment. Ace Killer 15 with the Claren MP4 Dash 12C. Looks at the back of Pauly Dog in the Audi R8 RS. Go for D that we are around off the top 10 being followed by Baker Bonds, who's well behind. Maldovic is uh, then right at the back of the field. Well, Sister Flint has gone. He's actually not hung around, and I don't really blame him. So he's not going to get any points in today. A bit of a shame. As Ace Killer 15 in eighth place is under big pressure now from Maldovic. But Maldovic will be under investigation by the stewards for that first corner shunt between himself and Sister Flint. Both drivers will be able to get their side of the story. But Maldovic trying to overtake the senior driver, the Ace Killer 15. As Ace Killer 15 goes wide, way off the circuit there. And Maldovic goes, thank you very much, I'll have that. As Pauline Dog looks at the back of Killer Ramsey is now in seventh place, coming onto the carousel. Surely no one's going to try and overtake here, that'd be suicide. Meanwhile, up ahead, football 676 goes very wide at the carousel, and now was Killer Ramsey to get right underneath him in the RUF. So Killer Ramsey is on the high charge here, drives up the carousel beautifully, goes around the outside, takes the title line, and that's easily done. Oh, up to the grass, now almost up into the gravel there. Somehow managed to keep it on the island. Killer Ramsey doing a great job now in P5. And he started in 13th place. Killer Ramsey really showing his muscle here. 94001, but we're wondering how the hell he's got his teammate in his rearview mirror. Doesn't matter how, he's there. Killer Ramsey is really on a charge. Probably Swire in third. You know, now he's second and way out in front of this Skarky Puppy. So let's get back to this duel between the IUF drivers. As Killer Ramsey looks on the back at 94001. Only seven laps here at the Dodge Lifer because of how long it is. But these drivers are putting it all on the edge of the moment really, really aggressively. Killer Ramsey gets a bit of poor traction off that corner, just after the jump there. Really found it difficult, but then it gets better wide through the fast sweepers of night 4001. Now he's got much out for turbulent air here. I was headed to this jewel old jump now, a little bit of pace there. It's almost threw him into the wall because of how much traction he lost. But he just managed to hang on, doing a great opportunity here. Killer Ramsey looking at the back of night 4001, but the IUF driver has responded. And Killer Ramsey is now stuck in fifth. Taking a quick look ahead, Bobby Swagger is pretty much on his own as is Nightfall 001. Catching him slowly, but not, not, not quite enough. So we might see a free card duel here if Bobby Swagger can't break away. Look at Killer Ramsey now coming up to the mini carousel. That's got a much tighter line there than Nightfall 001, who had to get out of the gas because he was unsighted by that really unusual temporary road surface. And look at the drift, he's made a mistake there. And Killer Ramsey's into the wall. 94001 smashes the wall. Killer Ramsey goes, thank you very much. See you next week. Football 676 number one now is charging after the IO driver. Killer Ramsey up to fourth. He starts in 13th, so that's nine places on one lap.
In real racing terms at a regular circuit, that's like the equivalent of nine places in three and a half laps. Sensational stuff. Paulie Douglas got Maldovic not too far behind him. Same with Ace Killer 15. Baker Buds rounds off the top 10 in the McLaren MP4. That's Paul Simeon, Gurf or Demon in 11th. And that is it. So, Ace Killer 15 trying to chase on the Paulie Dog. Let's get back up here though, because look at this. One more, 676 number one. Has Carlos at the back of Knight 4001. I also want to quick look at Killer Ramsey. How close is it to Bobby Swagger? Not close enough at this time. That's Knight 4001 on the first lap. Has gone into the pits. Well, that's interesting. So, four more six seven six number one is released in fifth place. Behind him, you got Polly Dog in the RDR8 LMS, and you got Malovic in the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C. Knight 400 is going to lead the pits as Ace Call 15 also pitted as well. So, these drivers might possibly know something that we don't hear. It'd be interesting to see if they possibly pulled a master stroke. Moving further forward, football 676 and 1 as the cars have already started to spread out a little bit, courtesy of those accidents. It's such a long circuit like this, such an unusual circuit, it's hardly a surprise. Kevin Ramsey in fourth place, trying to chase after Bob Lee Swagger in the Aldi R8 LMS, who's ahead of him. Bob Lee Swagger is definitely the one he wants. He wants to beat him. He wants to get those points, get himself on the podium, keep himself into contention for that championship run to Le Mans next week. Don't forget, next week here on Excite Racing League, it's a double-hour stream, two hours long, double points. So it's a real case of get your muscle in there. It's going to be a low-drag, high-speed High thrills racing. Be there and watch it. Same time, same place. So Bobby Swagger can only look on as the behind him, Killer Ramsey in the RUF a slide to close the gap. Looking up ahead meanwhile. Bagavo not a million miles away from these guys actually. Bagavo's not quite broken away. However, Skarky Puppy has. 6.48 is the time that he's set. A 6.52 from Bagavo. A 6.58. And Bobby Swagger spun. Bobby Swagger has somehow gone around. Killer Ramsey is on into third place. He's on the podium. Wow, what a recovery drive this is for Killer Ramsey. Having failed to qualify, has got himself on the podium. Really good stuff. Bobby Swagger will be furious about that because it didn't look like Killer Ramsey was anywhere near him when I came on board. So it wasn't an accident. It wasn't anything like that. He's just somehow dropped it at that corner. Now, football 676 number one is in the BMW C4 chasing after Bobby Swagger now in the Audi R8 LMS. So football 676 number one fancies those points. Really wants to punch above his weight here and keep himself in this top division as we enter these final two races. Going through the louder kink into the tight hairpin. And you can see that Bagavo, um, not Bagavo, football 6 of a single one, favoured a wider line through the hairpin, but it's allowed him to close the gap. Bobby Swagger is not far ahead of him. This is his chance. And for those of you watching on the stream at the moment, live and exclusive on Twitch.tv, the chat box is wide open. Please get your comments in by Football Racing, who earlier on wished us a good race. Football Racing is covering our simulcast. The Division 2 race is being recorded and hopefully we'll be able to get that on the YouTube channel at some point. Meanwhile, System Flint's put his points on the stream with regards to being spun into the wall. That's Bobby Swagger has spun again! And Football 676 number 1 now goes through! Bobby Swagger falling through the field and Paulie Dog in the RDR8 LMS overtakes him around the outside! Bobby Swagger fills into 6th place and now he's in the toe! Deep in the slipstream of the draft, Pauly Dog is under pressure, but Bobby Swagger, two and four stellars, have critically cost him time and places. Sister Flint, going back to what you've got to say there, um, all I ask is if you get on the forum, it's hard to flip a racing with what happened. I can also say that it was seen on the screen, so there is video footage. The stewards can make their inquiry. Oh, meanwhile, Football 676-1 has made a mistake as well. So we've got a free car scrap now heading into the carousel. You've got Bobby Swagger in sixth place in the RDR8 Alabas. Right, I had a red poly gun in the sister car. And then Football 676-1 in the BMW Z4. As football goes wide at the start of the carousel, Bobby Swagger and Polly Dog take a much more natural line. And that's going to close the gap between these three guys. 
at the track. There's 13 miles long and takes more than seven minutes to complete. These guys are all closer than they've ever been. Bobby Swagger shaves the grass on the outside there. Such confidence. And he wants to try the side by side with Paulie Dog. They make contact. He goes into the wall. Paulie Dog hangs on the outside and lets him through there. Not really sure if he had to, but good sportsmanship to avoid that. Meanwhile, Sister Flint says he's enjoying watching this live go on Skanky Puppy. Well, Skanky Puppy's currently got a chance at the moment, moving further forward. You can see a killer Ramsey now on the podium in third place, and uh, Bergamo, and Mill Skanky Puppy is quite a distance in front now, so you can really see all eyes down pretty much on this jewel here as Polly Dog has fallen away from the back of Bobby Swagger, who rides to the outside coming as much as he dares in fifth place, chasing after football 676 number one in the BMW C4, and you can really see that Bobby Swagger. He'll be furious. He's made so many mistakes on this lap. Really got it wrong, but he's got a chance here to get himself back into the points. Now, keep an eye on this, meanwhile. 94001, he's been in the pits. And he's about to come up to potentially pass Pauly Dog. Pauly Dog may well find himself a lap down on 94001 here. The RUF driver might well have made an absolute masterstroke. Absolutely brilliant stuff, seventh place, but he's chasing down Pauly Dog all the time. As we enter these fast sweepers down towards the mini carousel and the end of the lap, Pauly Dog gets on the brakes a little earlier than 94001. Now he's got so much more confidence driving this RUF. And look at the drive that he got on that corner before the micro carousel. Really found much more pace there. Now Pauly Dog with the big pressure going wide, shaving the grass. Now he's gone off the circuit and that's where I want 94001 to go. Thank you very much. I will have a bit of that. However, Pauly Dog might well have the draft and might be able to slipstream him down the mile long straight here towards the end of the lap. Pauly Dog is seven place, trying to catch up to 94001 in the RUF, but he's just not quite closing the gap here. 94001 potentially pulling out the battle. Meanwhile, side by side, Bobby Swagger in the draft on Football 676-1. But Football 676-1 is looking to attack here and counter, going through the fast kick down towards the end of the lap and Bobby Swagger shaves the grass, loses traction and that allows Football 676 number one through these fast kicks down towards the end of the lap to close the gap a bit. Now, are any of these drivers going to dive into the pits here? Bobby Swagger and, Knight for, and Football Cove go through as does Knight 4001. Can't see any other cars in the pit lane at the moment. So it's all a question as to when the night falls, are we going to get the rain and who's going to be able to keep it on the island? Football 676 number one has really got some pressure building here now because Knight 4001 in the RUF is right behind him, really attacking, really on the rear end of that BMW Z4. The power to see so much more planted from Knight 4001. He's finding it so much easier to get the power down and attack. Knight 4001's first lap pit stop might well have been an absolute masterstroke. Football 676 number one getting out of shape going over the crash into the blind bend. And 94001, look at the confidence he has there. Probably gets into the slipstream. And 94001 fancies a drag race here. Down towards this really tight kink. Side by side, but through he goes. Well, football 676 number one gets right back into the toe here. And might fancy an undercut in towards the tight hairpin at the end and for the gravel. 94001 gets on the brakes a little later and takes that position authoritatively. He's now in fifth. And chasing down quickly after Bobby Swagger in the Aldi R8 LMS. Killer Ramsey moving on in third place, still trying to catch up to Bagabo. Well, Skarky Puppy has pretty much run away with it out front at the moment. So the top three separated by quite a gap. But 94001 in the RUF is really trying to change things here. Really trying to change the game as he gets closer to the back of Bobby Swagger as he gets towards the end of Saxon 1. And you can see 147 from Skunky Bubba, 149 from Bagaro, and a 148 from Keller Ramsey. But Bobby Swagger on nearly two seconds slower than Knight. Knight 4001 really on a charge here at the end of sector one. So a great opportunity for the RUF driver to overtake the RDR8 LMS. 
And that's one of the things, is the Germans are pretty much leading the race at the moment. You've got RUS, Audis, BMWs, no VATs, no Ginettas, no Astons. Night 4001, going through these fast blind sweepers down through the louder kink. It's the happy bubbly swan goes a little wide. Night 4001 keeps it nice and tight. Really gets into the slip straight. It's a great opportunity now. Heading towards the end of sector two. It's not too much far away here. Really get on the gas on the on the taps going into the fast double double apex sweeper. You can see the night 4001 such more confidence picking a little hill climb through the bump up the inside, getting sleepy to the flip tip stream of Bobby Swagger in the R D R A L M S. Bob is on the big big pressure here as night 4001 gets right tucked up NASCAR style, almost touching bumper to bumper as the night has well and truly fallen here in the North Swiper. No sign of rain yet, but we have plenty of darkness and you can really see the lights bobbing a blur here. Bubbly Swagger flashing his headlights for whatever reason. The track ahead of him is completely clear. And Night 4001 tries to psych him out with the same kind of move going through these fast sweepers. And look at the confidence Night 4001 has as he gets into the slipstream. Possible sideways driving here. No, he decides to back out before this kink. He needs to be able to get a better drive off here and get a turn before the, before the carousel. Look how much confidence Night 4001 has. Gets on the brakes nice and late, goes to the outside. Night 4001, Bobby Swagger, drag racing here in the notch driver. It looks to happen before the carousel. Great opportunity for Night 4001 as he really gets deep into the substrate of Bobby Swagger. How is the Audi R8 LMS resisting? Here we go, let's see what driver's lies take here for the carousel. One of the most iconic corners in all of motorsport. And you can see a Bobby Swagger taking full advantage of that one line through that corner to hold up Night 4001, who's going to be getting frustrated now. He wants to get past the Audi. He wants to take the opportunity here. This is a great chance. He can change the grass on the outside, taking a lesson out of Bobby Swagger's block. But the Audi R8 LMS driver is resisting. He's stoic. He's defensive. And that's keeping Night 4001 behind him. Knight takes a cheeky look before these fast sweepers that lead on down to the jump. And it's a great opportunity to try and get the driver's sights out. We see a few drivers going off here in qualifying and practice. And you can really see Bobby Swagger. Look how close those cars are. Almost into the bumpers, touching each other there. It's unbelievable. NASCAR driving at the North Sliver. You wouldn't expect to see that. Both drivers really attacking here as Flight 4001 flashes his headlights, telling Bobby Swagger, Get out of my way. But the driver in the RDR8 LMS is resisting. He's not giving up that easy. And all you people out there watching live and exclusive on Twitch.tv, this is the next time racing league. Round 12 at the PlayStation 4 GT3 Championship at the North Schleifer Nürburgring. And if all you people have got comments, you get them in the chat box here on Twitch.tv. And we'll do our best to get them run out. I'm Pete Marker for those of you who've never heard me before. And you can see that Night 4001 getting a good line through the inside there. Bobby Swagger makes a mistake. Spins and smashes into the Oh, front end completely stoved in. Night 4001's relentless pressure has finally forced him to crack. Night 4001, then you've got Football 6761 who's gone by through. Bobby Swagger, headlights smashed as Paulie Dog almost goes into the wall behind him. Evidently, the RDRA LMS's like to crash. And these drivers are really struggling. Football 6761 coming up to the mini carousel. As we go race spots on the cameras, we have rain here in the North Schleifer. Rain has turned the power of absolutely nowhere. It's dark, it's narrow, and it's dangerous. These drivers are really going to attack here. Does anyone dare go into the pitch now? Or do you hang on and wait for the traffic to track line to soak? Bearing in mind, a good lap here is seven minutes. Bagavo skips the pit lane. Bagavo's gambling. Killer Ramsey has got past him somewhere. I don't know how that happened. Killer Ramsey is now in second place. Skunky Puppy has also stayed down. Went back further through the field. Football 676 number one. He's on the final pit. To the final straight before the pit. Let's see if the BMWZ4 driver goes in as the rain starts to fall. Or are the drivers gambling on it being but a shower and not going to be indicative of a full rain? Indeed he does. Football 6761 decides, no, I'm going to pit. 
And again, I feel you're going to see both Pauly Dog and uh, Bobbly Swagger pitting here because of the damage that they've suffered to their cars. Indeed, Bobbly Swagger comes straight in. Pauly Dog goes off, hits the tyre wall on the outside before the pit. Well, that kind of says it all, really, in terms of summing up his race. It's been a banger in more ways than one. 94001. Gambling in the eye, you have to stay it out. So is Pagamo as he goes through the middle of sector one. Killer Ramsey, meanwhile, trying to catch up to Skanky Puppy. But in terms of lap time, Killer Ramsey is still one and a half seconds off in terms of overall pace. Shaggy will be shaving the wall on the outside there, and that might allow Killer Ramsey to close the gap if he's lost too much time here at the Nordschleifer. Looking at it in the darkness, that must be absolutely terrifying. Where, where's your line? What can you see? A track has got 128 corners, and this is all you've got. Riding on board of it, look at that! You can barely see anything. These drivers are really earning the key today here at the Nordschleifer. Going back for the field, football 676 number one is out of the pits now. Presumably on intermediate tyres, he's got Bobbly Swagger with his headlights fixed and his car pretty much repaired. Going back through first sector one, same with Maldovic, who's now gone ahead of Pauly Dog. That critical mistake from Pauly Dog at the final corner before the pit lane, which threw him into the tyre wall, has cost him dear, as he's now behind the McLaren driver. Maldovic, though, under fire because of that first lap incident between himself and System Flint. The stewards no doubt will be investigating that after the race. I'm not going to give my perspective on it because I didn't see all of it. And I think it's best that it's reviewed and, and independently. Now curiously, if one more driver retires, I might actually get a point here because I'm now showing it a lot of place. I don't think that's allowed under the rules. But Polly Dog looks to take an advantage here as we did a mistake from Maldovic, who's got into the wall, and again, and again, what happened there? Maldovic completely got that one wrong, and Ace Killer 15 chops on through as a result of that. Quite, no, don't quite know what happened, maybe he was unsighted by the rain, maybe he lost his grip, well that was a fender bender of the highest order, as he went straight into that, unbelievable. Meanwhile, for those of you out there watching on the stream, please let me know if there's any issues with the quality. I'm seeing many different bit rates on my software, so I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I really can't tell you. Meanwhile, Football 676 number one attacking in the, in the BMW, trying to catch up tonight. 4001 is a bit too far away. Drift though. We are at that point where the drivers have pretty much filtered and formed a gap between each other. But as the rain starts to fall on the North Sliver, it's going to be tricky to know if these guys are going to be compromised when they come into the pits. Because you can see the rain, look how much difference it is. It's hard to see because of the lights, but if we go on board, you can see, you can just see on the outside of the screen, the showers are starting to take effect. So the grip will start to go, and looking at tracks, corners like this, would you want to drive the carousel with a river of water going down it? I certainly wouldn't, that's all I've got to tell you. Killer Ramsey's got a big gap at the moment. Bagarbo's just gone through the carousel. 94001 has just gone through the fast kick before it. So this gives you an idea. These drivers are all separated by about six or seven seconds. And they're all holding station at this point. But we see the mistakes from Polydog. We saw the mistake from Maldovic. It's possible that these drivers may have a mistake that causes them to go off. Going through the Lambda King, Ace Killer 15, really not enjoying the second half of the season. He's not had the performance he needs. And I get a feeling he's pretty much got his sights set on the Le Mans race next week on Twitch.tv, live and exclusive. For those of you, that will be our final race of this season. And then keep your eyes peeled to the website, ExciteRacingLeague.com, to find out what our next league and division is going to be. There's plenty of plans afoot. That's all I can tell you. Well, I'm moving further forward. Bagaro trying to avoid this rain, trying to ignore it as he gets to the BMW Z4, attacking as much as he dares. Killer Ramsey in the second of the RUS just got after the jump and through the fast kink. And then you've got Skarky Puppy, who's well out on his own at the moment, really far ahead, coming up towards the micro carousel. I get the feeling he's likely to go into the pits here because he's got a gap of around about eight seconds. You can see that once again, the fastest laps. 
You know, like his last one was a 6.44. Kilo Ramsey is showing. Bergara was a 6.57. So he was 13 seconds quicker than Bergara. 9400, 652, and football 6761. After that pit stop, all the way down to the 730s. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have any drivers close together. It's a real shame. I'd like drivers to be close together. Maybe that mistake from Paul, he don't buy a lot of time, but actually, his ace killer might catch up to him. Heading out of the carousel, the Audi R8 LMS driver, really finding this difficult, really struggling to get that power down in this car with the rain. Evidently, needs to get it and change his tyres. Meanwhile, riding with Skarky Puppy. No, Skarky Puppy stayed out. Well, that's interesting. Skarky Puppy in the RUF is showing really courageous driving here. He stayed out. He's not being affected by this rain. Now, how is Killer Ramsey going to drive here? Is he going to go in? Yes, he is. So this could tell us in terms of master strokes. But Garbo, meanwhile, the BMW Z4 is not too far behind. He goes over the inside, shaves that, manages to catch it. Stops the car and goes into the pits. Nice parking there, Bagamo. Pull over there, put five quid in the meter, will you? You are 9400 on the RUF. Attacking and going down the flash straight. You're football 6 number 6 number 1. Who's coming up to the mini carousel and Bobby Swagger in the Audi R8 LMS is not far behind him. So we might well have a fight brewing here, viewers. We'll stay on board with this for now. As we come into the micro carousel, Bobby Swagger gets on the inside, rides that beautifully, goes through to the outside, clips the outside bend, and you can see the football 676 number one under big pressure now in the uh, in the BMW Z4. Bobby Swire getting on the power, goes underneath the bridge, down the fast straight, trying to catch up to the back of football 67601. Despite the spray, despite the rain, he gets deep into the toe here. Bobby Swire gets right underneath him. Gonna try and make a move on the inside, this could be potentially quite brave here. Moving on board with Bobby Swire, you see he's gone through for now. But football 67601 will get right behind him and a great opportunity and are these drivers going to be peeling off to the pits or are they going to be keeping going here? Football 6 number 6 number 1 goes around the inside goes up I guess that a bit wrong there almost cuts the bend has to get out of the gas and a mile on a critical time for Bobby Swire going to make a break away here and retain that 5th place for now it looks like that's done and dusted Now Paul Dog and Ace are pretty much on the road, Maldon McGillie's on too, and then you've got Bacon Bonds way at the foot of the field here. So moving further forward, you've got 9400 in fourth place now after that early pit stop. He's trying to ride the outside and keep it going, but he's got a little wide there. Very lucky not to get sucked onto the grass and into the wall. But Garvin will be well, just coming up to the tight hairpin before the downhill gravel trap. Gets that nice and beautiful on the entry. Meanwhile, Keller Ramsey already coming up to the end of Saxon 1. A great opportunity here. It goes over the beans. What kind of time is he looking at? Not showing us the breaking of bean time yet. So I just got through now. Only a tenth difference between Skarky Puppy and Killer Ramsey on the first part of the lap here. So a great opportunity for Killer Ramsey, who let's not forget, started in 13th place. He's now in second. Skarky Puppy well, tries to do all he can to keep this gap ahead to the teammate of this driver. These drivers both very much in the zone. Very much odds on to try and win this. We've just gone over half distance. Three laps remain of the Nordschleifer. It's a strange race in many ways as we go through the loud and King well, alongside Killer Ramsey. Gets a nice recovery line through there. Really attacking as much as he can. Well, Scotty Moon is broken away pretty much. Bagarbo, way down here. Really not, really quite far behind these guys. 94001 as the sun has started to rise. The night is pretty much over. The rain is still falling though, so the drivers will be nice to get a bit of sunlight here and make it a bit easier to enjoy the curves. You'll be able to see more. The rain though has not fallen away, so these drivers have got to really trust the grip. Meanwhile, Bobby Swire has still got football 676 number one, not too far away from him. And football 676 number one got a better exit. How that happened, Bender, that allows him 
to start closing up to the back of Bartley Swaga. The BMW Z4 driver attacking the Audi R8 on the left. Goes to the outside, really uses the curb beautifully. Heading into this tight hairpin. Gets on the inside, doing a great opportunity here. Football 6 7 6 number 1. Looking at the back of Bobbly Swagger and the Audi R8 LMS. Dies on the inside. Bobbly Swagger mounts the curb. Very brave thing to do in the way because there's no grip on there due to the amount of pain. And you can see the football 6 7 6 number 1. Really attacking here. Really being aggressive. Really fancies his chances as the sun starts to rise behind the rain clouds on the North Schleifer in Germany. It's the last to keep before the happen, and you can see Bobby Swagger taking a more casting line there, whereas Football 676 the War takes a much more traditional line, and that allows him to close the gap a little bit, evidently that a little bit faster. <coughs> Football 676 number 1 gets into the uphill climb, really trying to attack as much as he can on the back of Bobby Swagger and the RDR8 LMS. The BMW Z4 really punching them up its way here in the North Schleifer in Germany. A great opportunity to get a big scalp on points ahead of next week's double length, double point race at the Saki Day of the Start in Le Mans. For all you guys out there watching live on the live on exclusive on Twitch.tv, please join us next week. It's the final round of the PlayStation 4 GT3 division and the end of our first season. And we've only got eight points covering the top two drivers, nine the top three so far. That will be affected by the results because Bagamo's only in third place at the moment. So if results stay as they are, he'll lose ten points to Scoggy Bobby and lose a further three points to Killer Ramsey. But it's double points at Le Mans, and the result like at Watkins Glen would give him a debut championship. Football 6 number 6 number 1 drifting wide there, shaving the grass. Really our brave, rugged drivers are caught in the carousel. Great opportunity here. Football 6 number 6 number 1. That's the Bobby Swagger makes a mistake. Bobby Swagger gets it wrong and on the way to the carousel. Football 6 number 6 number 1. Who's gone wide and gone round the carousel rather than risk going through the rivers in the middle. That might potentially be intelligent driving as Bobby Swagger finds himself down in sixth place now. Night 4001, trying to get close to the back of Bagamo. Bagamo's quite a way clear from what I can see at the moment. Bagamo was a full three seconds quicker for his sector one. Bagamo evidently much more set up for these conditions. Through the micro carousel comes Killer Ramsey, riding that as beautifully as normal, really attacking as much as he can, really on the offensive. But then Skunky Puppy already coming on to the end of the lap. That shows you how far ahead he is. And no, he's not pitting. He went wide. He looked like he was going to go on the brakes there and go into the pits. He's not gone into the box. Now, the problem for the drivers is they do have to pit on the Rackside Racing League rules. So there's only two laps left now because Killer Ramsey is on the third one from the end. Skunky Puppy has gone through to start the penultimate lap. So he's already on the attack here. Killer Ramsey though. Right up board the RUF driver has done a 644.8 is his fastest lap. Let's see if he actually goes into the pits here and tries to steal a march on the, the Skunky Puppy because he'll have that extra lap to get the tyres up to temperature. An extra seven minutes. No, he doesn't. Killer Ramsey also likes to stay out. So Pagano now, he's in third place. And then you've got Night Force 001 coming up towards the final micro car off the micro carousel down this mile long straight. So Pagano is about 1.1 miles ahead at the moment. That sounds like an absolute age in terms of motorsport. But when a truck is 13 miles long, it's anything but. Bagavo elects to miss the pits as well. So Bagavo daring to dream, daring to remain as football 676-01 has broken away slightly from Bobby Swaga in the RDR8 LMS. So Bobby Swaga very much down in sixth place now. Seventh place, you've got Pauly Dog in the sister RDR8 LMS. Base color 15 with the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C. Then you've got Maldivic, who's gone very, very wide indeed, almost into the wall there. In fact, it looked like he did the kiss that, so he's lost quite a bit of damage there. And they've got bacon buds at the foot of the points. And then finally, me in the pits like a boss, because I can. So moving further forward, Ace Color 15 looking to attack as Paulie Dog goes wide 
and the micro carousel and clicks the wall. Evidently liking going into the damage here. Football 6 over 6 number 1 has lost out a little bit to the back of Bobbly Swagger, who's really started to catch him up a little bit through that fast sweeper section. So Bobbly Swagger may yet fancy himself getting 5th place and 12 points. 10 points, not 12 points, sorry. Football 6 7 6 number 1 trying to get the extra lap time. It's up ahead, Knight 4 0 0 1 heads towards the end of sector 1 and the uphill climb through the blind bend. Fastest time so far is 6 minutes 49. Then you got Bagava way in front of him, just gone through the downhill hairpin at the end of that straight and already miles in front. Then you got the head of him, Killer Ramsey, who's very much ahead of him by quite a long distance. And then, already going through the hairpin after the loudest kink is Skunky Puppy, with two laps remaining here at the Nordschleifer in Germany. 94001, the only driver at the front of the field who's been in the pits so far. Now that may potentially work to his favour. As the rain has come down, the drivers have really had to work hard to keep their tyres alive. Bagavo really hanging on in the BMW Z4. And ahead of him, you've got both Killer Ramsey and Skarky Puppy. Football 606 number one, and that's a broken clear. A bubbly slogger by quite a way. I think bubbly slogger may potentially had a crash there because he's lost a lot of time. Polly Dog, meanwhile, struggling in the Audi R8 LMS. And then Ace Killer 15 in the McLaren MP4 Dust 12C. So frustratingly, we're at that point where we've got a lull in the action. The drivers are all away from one another. But keep your eye on Night 4001. Because if both Killer Ramsey, Skunky Puppy, and Bagavo sneak into the pits to change tyres, that might come back to him. Give you a rundown of the fastest laps while they can. Skunky Bubby's done a 6.43.8. It's his fastest lap. Killer Ramsey is second on 6.44.8. Then you've got Bagavo at 6.46.8. Two seconds slower. And yet he's running in third place. 94001 to 6.49.0. Then you've got Football 6 7 to 1 at 7 minutes and 8. He's not even broke six, 7 minutes. Bobby Swagger at 6.58. Then you've got 7.02 from Polydog. And 7.22 from Ace Killer. Maldivex is not showing, but look at that from Bacon Bonds. 7 minutes 44. A full minute slower than Skarky Puppy. Move back with the field, you can definitely see a bobbly swagger has fallen away from the back of football 676 number one. 94001 not really making the headway he needs to get ahead of all these drivers, but he might get fancy his chances of a podium here. Moving further forward, going through the carousel, you see Killer Ramsey on the full attack there as he tries to really push the car through and get that extra pace. And then you've got Kip Skunky Puppy out in first place by some considerable margin as we're on the penultimate lap here at the Nordschleifer, the next lap will be the last one and you can see that already Skunky Bubby's coming up towards the end of sector 2 that side's not yet showing but he's certainly on the attack <coughs> Bagavo taking a very very timid line through the carousel there and you can see that Knight 4001 is just coming on to start the, start the king before the carousel so Bagavo's got quite a long gap on him at the moment but it's not got the pit stop and if, he, if it's not a pit stop how quickly can Bagavo turn on the tyres So Bagavo trying to catch up to second place Killer Ramsey, but he's just not got the pace at the moment in the rain. And unfortunately, it has kind of fizzled out a bit this race because the drivers have all fallen away from one another. Too many incidents, too, too many four poor driving moments, and too little understanding of the circuit. But Killer Ramsey tries to cling on a Skarky Puppy, heads around through the kink after the end of the car mini, mini carousel. The sun is bright here at the final straight. The morning sun has vanquished the, the horrible night as we head towards the end of the lap here for Skunky Puppy trying to attack. And there's one more lap to go after this, and that is very much the end of the race from the Skunky Puppy, the RUF driver. 
Killer Rams, they just gone through the micro carousel and got it a bit wrong there. You can see he had to stop the car. Evidently almost pitched into a spin. Bergamo, quite well behind. He'll be disappointed to have not been able to fight for the victory so far. But he is, so far, on a podium. It's a question of whether he can avoid making the mistakes that Knight 4001 and that have made behind to keep that podium and keep his title hopes alive. Through the final, final of the kicks, Knight 4001 on full out attack here. Moving in the front of the field. Oh, it's Skanky Puppy's going into the pits. Skanky Puppy went in. Now, as Killer Ramsey, is he going to come out behind him? Oh, he's a pit slot clear. That just shows how much tight Skarky Puppy had. He's come out well clear. Killer Ramsey, is he going to dive into the pits now? Because yes, he does have to. Do, he does have to stop, or else he could find himself disqualified here. Now this is where we are to keep eyes on night four zero zero one. The Scott Killer Ramsey. Killer Ramsey is not pitted. Killer Ramsey has not gone into the pits. He may well find himself on a severe penalty, possibly even a disqualification, because he's not. Pitted for tyres, as far as I am aware. Killer Ramsey, now Bergamo, is he going to go into the pits? No, Bergamo's not got in either. So if those drivers have not got into the pits, that could mean that both drivers actually lose their positions and lose their classification in the race. Drama on the final lap here. A mistake has been made, Skarky Puppy. We all saw him go in. He is safe. But the two drivers, oh, and Killer Ramsey spun it. Killer Ramsey has dropped it over in the first sector here. Turns into a ghost car briefly. Bergamo will now fancy his chance to catch him up. But it doesn't really matter. It's arbitrary. Because I'm pretty certain that both of these drivers have another mistake. Killer Ramsey spins again. Killer Ramsey is all out of rubber and all out of luck here. As Bergamo starts to catch him up. What has happened here is a disastrous final lap. Killer Ramsey and Bergamo may well be staring down the barrel of a penalty that may lead them to be disqualified from the race. Because from what I'm aware of and from what I've seen, they have not gone into the pits. They have not served the man. Oh, but 94001 has dropped it now. He did pit. He pitted on the very first lap. This is crazy. The final lap of the race and all the drivers have started to feel the toll here. They've gone through the night. They've gone through the rain. They've gone through many cracks of the barrier, but they've not yet accomplished victory. Killer Ramsey, Bergamo, what have you both done? You might well have thrown your championship charges away here because let's not forget, if Skarky Puppy gains 25 points, that will put him in the lead by a considerable way because he was only eight points adrift of Bagavo. With the double points, that might allow him to come third and take the championship at Le Mans. On the stream, Sister Flint says, Ha 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 ha, I'm unsure if they pitted too. Absolutely, the stream is going to be reviewed by the stewards for this one because that's a potentially serious flaw. As 94001 goes wide there, really chopping the grass. Football 676 well clear, Bobby Swagger. Polly Dog just started the final lap now, Ace Killer 15 way down, and then Maldovic in ninth place and Bacon Bonds in 10th. But those drivers might get a surprise vault up the order here, depending on what's happened, because, as I say, I didn't see Bergamo go into the pits. I didn't see Killer Ramsey go into the pits, but I sure as hell saw Night 4001 and Skunky Puppy Pit. So I know for a fact that those two are safe. The thing is, the drivers were pleading before this race about it being such a long track that this should be double points. I get the feeling they're not going to be saying that now because, needless to say, both Bagavo and Killer Ramsey did not pit, to my knowledge. The stream will have to be reviewed. For those of you guys out there watching, thank you very much for joining us here on Twitch.tv live and exclusive Excite Racing League's penultimate round in the Nordsch Life of Nürburgring, Germany for the GT3 PlayStation 4 Championships. I've been Peter Markroft giving you colour commentary live and exclusive here. There is going to be a repeat of this on the YouTube channel for Excite Racing League. Hit us up there. If you're not a member already, please check out the website, ExciteRacingLeague.com. We are looking for drivers for future championships in this season. Next 
last weekend is our final race, the Blue Ribbon. Two hour double points race at the Saki de la Sarre in Le Mans. It's going to be a real test of the drivers, that one. Low drag, low downforce, high speed, high quality, high octane. Scargy moving goes through the carousel, a ball halfway through. I get the feeling he knows that he's miles ahead here. Maybe he's even realised that the other guys might not have gone into the box. I don't know. Uh, either way, Scargy was taking it very easy on the final lap, and who can blame him? Because this is a treacherous weather here at the Nordschleife. Bergamo catching up slowly to the back of Killer Ramsey. Killer Ramsey really on a charge here, but. Again, it's all for naught. It's football 676-1 is ahead of 94001. I think 94001 has dropped it and made a mistake here. It is probably Swagger's right behind him. Off camera, 94001 has thrown it away. Now that's really critical because if the positions stay as they are, or if 94001 finds himself being bumped behind Bobby Swagger, that may mean he comes a net fourth place if the other guys end up losing their positions. So that will make him very much an outsider rather than a potential threat. He's gone very much wide there off the circuit into the wall. And Bobby Swagger goes, well, thank you very much. And because of that, against all odds, Bobby Swagger might well get a podium finish today. Because I say it again, I'm not aware of Bagavo or Killer Ramsey going into the pit. <laughs> Scargy will be heading down towards the kink at the end of the fight, at the end of the jump before the second part of the lap here. Uh, final lap times haven't really changed much, so the guys are really keeping it honest. And you can see that Killer Ramsey has got away from Bagavo now. Uh, also, football 676 number one has easily broken away from Bobby Sanger. As 94001 once again drops it, goes into the wall, and Bizarre has pulled over. Is this going to be a retirement? Is 94001 retiring from the race here? Must remain on board. There's Paulie Dog in the RDR8, our mess. I don't know if he's going to pass 94001 here. It looks like he's in the same sector to me. Indeed, he's, got, he's coming up close. Paulie Dog in the RDR8, our mess. We'll keep an eye on the left hand side of the track. There he goes. 94001. I think this is going to be a retirement. I think 94001 is out of the race. Ace Killer 15 and the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C. The Maldivic and Baker both all three driving the same cars. They might not be able to be leave their luck here because, yes, 94001 has gone. 94001 is out of the race on the final lap. He's failed to hold it together. He's failed to get to the checkered flag. That's critical for the championship. Skarky Puppy, meanwhile. Coming up towards the final part of the lap here to take a well-deserved victory at the Nordschleife. He's been a class apart. He was miles quicker in qualifying. He broke away early in the race and has not put a foot wrong. He pitted on the final lap. He's coming around the final corner to take the checkered flag and take an absolutely extraordinary victory. Meanwhile, Killer Ramsey comes through, not far from too far behind. Evan Ilya was a bit faster on the lap, but he may not yet feature in the classification. Same for Bagavo. He's going to finish on the circuit in third, but whether he gets the opposition position or not will be up to the stewards. Football 676 number one, meanwhile, coming round in fourth place at the moment. He's driving beautifully well, doing all he can, coming through the mini carousel, trying to take full advantage here. He's had to fight really hard. He's had to do really, really deep driving, and yet he may find himself getting a second place here after keeping his nose clean and keeping out of trouble pretty much. Bobby Swagger behind him completely misses the mini carousel, gets nowhere near it, but it doesn't matter because he's round the circuit as Paulie Dog drops it now. Paulie Dog has made a critical mistake. Ace color 15, I think he's too far behind now, so Paulie Dog is likely just to pivot this around and get on with it. But he's going to be dis bitterly disappointed that he also very nearly came to throw it into the wall. But football 676 number one coming down the mile long straight at the back of the circuit for the final time, heading towards the end of the track and flag here. Really good performance for football 676 number one. Had some really dig deep. He's got his own, he's pretty much a class apart in terms of his pace to the guys out front. But at the end of the day, to finish first, 
First, you have to finish. And that's exactly what Football 676 is going to do. Avoid going wide and off the circuit in the final two corners. Keeps it nice and clean in the lines. And that's going to be a very well-earned fourth place on track. Might well turn into a second. As Wobbly Swag, and make sure you got to make sure it doesn't get this wrong here. Keeps it nice and tight. Goes slowly past the pit entry. Oh, but he's managed to go off into the wall. Well, he's going to limp over the line and finish a net fifth place. Potentially a net third. Polly Dog, meanwhile, has pulled over. Polly Dog's pulled over. Is he out of fuel? Polly Dog has stopped at the mini carousel. Drama on the final lap. This is unbelievable. Polly Dog might well have lost this as Ace Killer 15 and the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C will hardly be able to believe his luck, providing he can get it to the end. Indeed, he has. Unbelievably, he's out of the race. Pauly Dog has lost it on the final lap. The same fate as 94001. They underestimated the fuel, I think. I think they've run out of fuel. Well, an unbelievable mistake there. Unbelievable. As base colour 15, he's going to hardly believe what's happened here. Wendy, if you said to him before this race he was going to come home and net 7th and that may get bumped up to a 5th place finish after finding it so difficult but he's got to make it round that's exactly where Paulie got dropped there and the car seems to slow down and it's slowing down again oh, don't tell me he's also going to fail to make it Ace Killer 15 under real pressure here The length of the track has caught people out as Paul as Ace Kill 15 goes wide into the grass. Comes up to the final straight here. The final opportunity to really keep himself going. Flashing his headlights like a boss. Windscreen wipers ablaze. I get the feeling he's just going to limp over the line here. But Ace Kill 15 will be looking at his alternator, demanding that he leaps over the line. Once he's willing to get out and push the car if he needs to. Driving in the rain, in the daylight here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. The final lap for the Ace Colour 15 in the McLaren MP4 Dash 12C. Goes through to the fast sweepers down towards the final couple of corners. Where you have to stop the car quickly after a very high speed approach. With the rain that could be difficult. Indeed he gets a little wobbly on the braking there. Comes very close to finding himself flying off the circuit. Rides the outside curb. Avoids clubbing the wall. Puts him into a net 7th place. And that's a great performance. We are Bacon Bunce. Bacon Bunce is also out. Unbelievably, we're going to only have nine finishers. Maldovic comes close to the end. This is absolutely extraordinary. Well, it just goes to show that you have to keep your cool and keep it to the end here because, unbelievably, Maldovic, who's now in ninth, or is showing ninth here, is going to finish higher than that because Bacon Bonds has failed to make it to the end of the race along with Knight for 001 and Paulie Dog, three drivers who failed to get to the end on the final lap. What pair of Bryce the Force of System Flint at the moment? Going through the final corner, and it looks like he's going to finish a net seventh place after that. Well, that's absolutely extraordinary. That's absolutely unbelievable. Well, I, I, I really have officially seen it all. It's been a race that's been really hard for Skunky Puppy, a deserved victor. He worked really hard, he had all the pace in the world and did a fantastic job. <laughs> On the screen, Sister Flitz is showing an open mouth as his thoughts. Well, who can blame you for that one? Killer Raze, magnificent performance right at the end to find himself going from the top of the bottom of the field all the way to second. Bagaro in third. 
Football, six, seven, six, double, one. In fourth, you got Bobbly Swagger, fifth. Ace Cole, fifteen, sixth. Maldivic is seventh. And then Knight, four, zero, zero, one. Showing as classified and in the garage. So maybe he found himself out of fuel. Who knows? But either way, he's got to the end. But there were only eight finishers. Eight. On the stream, meanwhile, Sister Flint says, good stream. Thank you very much for watching. And as we say, next week we are going to be here live and exclusive on Twitch.tv for the final time. It's the final race. We will be at the Le Mans 24 hours, the home of the Le Mans 24 hours, the Sakide or Saab. It's going to be a two hour long stream. Two hours of all out racing. And it's double points. Therefore, it's double jeopardy. Thank you all very much for watching. And good night.